As you know, the province moved into step one of the roadmap to reopen on Friday, June 11th. The step one of the roadmap was focused on the resumption of more outdoor activities with smaller crowds and where risk of transmission was lower. So it permitted, permitted more limited indoor settings to be open with restrictions in place and more outdoor activities. And I am happy to say that overall, everything went well over the weekend in Niagara on the Lake as we moved into step one. It can be very confusing because the announcements don't always match the actual regulations, which don't come out at precisely the same time. There's considerations around that, but there's also considerations around things like the Section 22 that we have in place that's from the um, Chief Medical Officer for the region. So there's a lot of things that have to be considered and how they interact with one another. So I think staff did a good job interpreting and our businesses and community also did a good job this weekend in, in terms of ensuring compliance. Last week I provided quite a lengthy update on specifically what the changes were. So this week I think what I'll do is just focus on some of the questions that we have been asked, the ones that come up more frequently, uh, and answer some of those for you and the community. So one of the main questions was can I eat at a restaurant and what will be the rules? So yes, restaurants, bars, food trucks, concession stands, and other food and drink establishments are permitted to reopen for outdoor dining in step one. No indoor dining or buffet style service may be provided though. So June 11th was a pretty exciting day, I think, for many restaurant owners, uh, since many had previously had to close or significantly alter their operations. We know that restaurants have been greatly impacted by COVID-19, so the town wants to help provide the resources that businesses need in order to maintain the health and safety of their staff and patrons while adapting to this current step in the recovery roadmap. Uh, to that end, town staff developed a food and drink establishment education package, which many of you may have seen, and that was to support owners and operators in understanding the various regulations at play. Oh, I see Councillor Weens is holding that up. Thank you, Councillor Weens. Uh, so in that package, there are details on Ontario Reg 8220 and the changes for step one, the section 22 order and general guidance. So that package, along with a list of our support programs that are available to businesses, is available on the town website at jointheconversationnoddle.org forward slash business support. So to update you a little on what that means, the provincial OREG allows for four persons at a table independent of which household the persons come from, uh, and it allows more if everyone at the table is from the same household. However, the regional section 22 order from the Niagara Region Medical Officer of Health requires that all persons at a table be from the same household. So, of course, the more stringent applies and the section 22 order being the most restrictive um, it has to take precedence in that circumstance. That has been in place since November and hasn't changed. However, we might not have noticed because the Ontario regulation was so restrictive between then and now. So among other requirements, that Section 22 order requires that food and drink premises ask for confirmation first of no symptoms of COVID-19 and that they are dining with only members of the same household or a maximum of two persons who are essential to maintaining physical and mental health, such as caregivers. They also gather the name and contact information. Now, as I mentioned, the education package speaks to both the regs and while the town doesn't have official responsibility to inform, we have tried to do so to assist the businesses, and I, I hope that's been working. The Director of Community Service, uh, Community and Development Services and the Supervisor of Enforcement also went out last week and inspected a number of patios, and they helped the business owners by answering any questions that they may have. So we hope that that was helpful as well. Okay, so the next question we've had frequently is, can I play tennis or pickleball? So the answer to that is yes, and that has changed a little from previously. So singles and doubles are permitted to play tennis and pickleball. However, the wearing of masks is recommended by the Medical Officer of Health for Niagara Region if double partners do not reside in the same household. The regs now require a physical distance of three meters be maintained between those who do not reside in the same household. 
And use of courts, of course, have to be done in accordance with all the physical distancing requirements as I've outlined previously. And the last question I'll ask today is, can I rent out or stay in a short term rental? So previously that was not permissible, but as we moved into step one, yes, that is now permissible. On the condition though that any indoor pools or communal steam rooms, saunas or indoor fitness centers or other rec facilities remain closed. Now the person that's responsible for operating the STR have to ensure that every person that's being accommodated complies with the restrictions and the size of the social gatherings and organized events. So this means reservations for the accommodation of individuals from separate households are not permitted. So for example, persons reserving the use of a cottage must all be from that same household. And additionally, all operators have to continue to ensure that their services meet physical distancing, cleaning, disinfecting, and all other requirements of the emergency orders uh, and advice from the public health group. Okay, so I'll switch over now to my vaccination update. So for the Nautil vaccine program, as I reported last week, we've added a clinic in Niagara-on-the-Lake, and that will be held at the community center on June 21st. We are also expecting two additional dates to be added in Noddle, and that hasn't been officially announced. Um, so I won't say the dates yet in case they change, but stay tuned for that. And then in terms of the vaccine statistics, effective today at 11.50, the region's website is reporting that approximately 63.8% of Niagara residents have been vaccinated. Uh, and that brings us to 354,807 doses administered. In terms of the percentage of the population that has been vaccinated, the I'll just tell you about the biggest jump and the biggest jump was in the 12 to 17 range. Last week I reported 22% and this week it's 42% uh, of that demographic has had their first vaccine dose. All right, traffic. So from a traffic perspective, we did not see an increase. It pretty much was about the same number as last week. Last week, we'd had 11,844 incoming cars, and this week we've had 11,806, so only about a 0.3% decrease over last weekend. Pretty stable right now. And as I mentioned last week, we are now reporting on the Tuesday. Um, you can find that information on our website. For the Bell Media campaign, that has officially ended. So that took place from April 10th to June 6th, and we are awaiting a final report. So I only have a little bit of information to relay to you for now. Uh, and that's that for all of Noddle from the 10th to June 6th, we saw about 548,000 unique devices enter into our town. And in Old Town, we saw about 290,000 unique devices enter into the town. Um, so I could give you the percentages, but they won't be accurate. Well, not that they won't be accurate. They won't give you a whole lot of new information yet because they need to analyze it. And right now it only shows uh, each time a device enters, it only counts it once. So for the full 57 days of the campaign, it wouldn't show each resident except for that one time. So the percentages would seem skewed based on my reports weekly. So I'll hold off on that and then circulate the final report to council once it's ready. Uh, Bylaw enforcement and tickets this weekend. So we were entering a weekend of uncertainty with the provincial move to step one so we were expecting to see some very large crowds however the covid complaint phone was surprisingly quiet and that's two weeks in a row with only a few minor issues and a few complaints weekend bylaw staff indicated that while things were busy old town was still manageable we saw 179 parking tickets issued this weekend and as step one continues and the number of people visiting Noddle is expected to grow, we expect parking to require more attention, of course. That's typical for this time of the season as we enter into summer. Thursday and Friday, temporary patios were inspected, as I mentioned earlier. And that went well, I think. Staff worked very hard to educate the business owners. 
Some facilities did have to alter their setup, but I think most owners were happy to have the discussion and happy to make the changes to ensure compliance and that everyone will be safe. Uh, winery patios were also inspected. Uh, they tend to have more space for social distancing, so no problems identified there. And some operators hadn't set their patios up quite yet, so bylaw staff will be returning to help them out as well throughout this week. And of course, I mentioned STRs are open. Uh, so many of the calls related to SDRs have reduced, but they still do remain a focus area for staff now. As part of step one, staff have to ensure all people in the rental are from the same household. So did have a few calls about that. And um, staff have worked with the operators to understand that requirement and make sure they're keeping track of the information. Uh, that's always been a requirement to keep track of who's coming to their STR. Um, as part of their licensing requirements, but it has become even more prevalent based on the regs. Parks were busy, as we can imagine, uh, but with outdoor limits now at 10 people, the volume of people was manageable and people appeared to largely be uh, keeping in compliance with the limits. Barbecues in the parks remained a concern this weekend as it was last weekend, and parking or park staff had to shut down multiple barbecues including one individual who actually started a bonfire right on the grass. So uh, that was stopped pretty rapidly. And of course, enforcement staff continues to work to ensure that we respond to all COVID-19 complaints that are raised. All right, so I'll switch it to some um, other news and good news. So turtles were brought up a couple of weeks ago. Council members and residents reached out because uh, some turtles have been crossing the street. Um, some had been run over by cars, very unfortunately, on Concession 6 near the Mewburn Bridge. So staff investigated. It was determined that the crossing is actually located within the city of Niagara Falls, right on the boundary. But we've been working with Niagara Falls City staff and they've advised that they're undertaking an investigation to determine their next steps to help out with that. So uh, we've assisted in terms of reaching out to Ontario Turtle Conservation Centre and they offered some tips. So I'll give you a few tips about that as well. <laughs> uh, first, you want to evaluate if it's safe to park on the other side of the road before you exit your car if you see a turtle crossing. But if it's safe to do so, you can actually pick up the turtle and then place it on the side of the road, always in the direction that they're headed, though, because they're going to go in that one direction. Uh, you don't want to put the turtle in the opposite direction or relocate the turtle. So that will help bring them to safety. And just remember to slow down and watch for that. It's a short time in the season that you see that. But um, educational information has also been posted to the town's social media pages advising people what to do if they come across turtles. So hopefully that's helpful. Uh, the step challenge I've been talking about recently, it finished up its second week and our steppers have taken more than 24 million steps already. So the target was 20 million and only halfway through the challenge and the group has exceeded the goal. So let's see how far they can get. For Communities in Bloom, they've still got their Garden of the Week contest going. So you can visit jointhecoversationnoddle.org forward slash garden for more information on that and to see all the creative garden photo submissions. Some of them are simply beautiful, so it's definitely worth checking that out. And my last good news story for the day is the drive through tulip sale. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I've got two more. Um, the drive through tulip sale. That's the bulb sale at the community center. So that's June 22nd from 10 a.m. until they sell out. It's $5 a dozen. You bring your own bag. It's cash only. And all proceeds will go to the town's tree fund. Uh, so now the last one is the strawberry social. So great news for the older adults in the community. It was canceled last year, but town staff have found a way to safely bring that back this year. It's going to look different than in past years to ensure we adhere to all COVID-19 regulations and guidance, but we're happy to bring this special event back. And I won't say any more because an official announcement and more details will be available later this week.